Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Today, we will be discussing our experimental proposal for the Commission 8 of SCP. We are from the University of Toronto Schools, also known as UTS, from Toronto, Ontario. The main question that we aim to explore is how will microgravity affect the functions and development of stem cells in the Schmidt Tier Mediterranean, a planaria body? My name is Arjun, and I, along with my fellow researchers, Arjun, Maddie, Matthew, and Alicia, will be talking to you today about sending planarians to space. Now, some of you may be thinking, what are planarians? Planarians. as shown in this image, are non-poisonous flatworms about 20 millimeters long that live in aquatic ecosystems. Planarians have the ability to regenerate large parts of the body with pluripotent and totipotent stem cells. In addition, many planarians reproduce asexually, a process in which planarians divide in half when there is a low density of planaria in their habitat. When planarians are deprived of food, they proportionally decrease in size and mass without affecting the natural processes. Furthermore, this process allows planarians to survive for extended periods of time without food. They also have very similar nervous and physiological systems to that of the human, making them therefore very important to research. Now Arjun will be discussing stem cells. Stem cells are unspecialized cells which are able to differentiate into one or more types of cells. There are two main types of stem cells, namely embryonic and adult stem cells. The diagram shown here displays totipotent, pluripotent, multipotent, and unipotent stem cells, each of which have a varying ability to develop into different types of tissue. Our experiment in particular will focus on totipotent and pluripotent stem cells. When stem cells undergo mitosis, is split into two different, cells, uh, two different cells, one of which can further divide as a pluripotent stem cell, and one that can no longer divide, referred to as daughter cell cells. In planaria, the daughter cells are dispersed through the outer edges of the planaria, while the adult stem cells remain in the center, as you can see in this picture here. If any part of the planaria is injured, the stem cells assemble at the location of the injury and initiate a healing process. In other words, the arrangement of the stem cell allows for regeneration on a mass scale. As you can see in this next image here, if a, if a planarian is cut into three separate pieces, each is able to form a whole organism within the short span of just seven days. Going to this project, we're asking three different, however related, questions. Each targets the investigation of how microgravity affects stem cells from a different angle. Our first questions you can see are how will microgravity affect the differentiation of embryonic stem cells in a planarian egg? Our second question was how will exposure to microgravity affect S. mediterranea stem cell functions such as regeneration on their return to Earth? Our third question was how will a microgravity environment affect the differentiation processes of adult stem cells? Here can be seen the layout of our fluid mixing enclosure. Each clamshell volume holds a separate experiment, each geared toward investigating one of our three research questions as outlined on the previous slide. With this, this design, we are making the most efficient use of a limited volume. The first volume of our FME will hold eggs of the sexual strain of the S. Mediterranean. The differentiation process that occurs in these eggs is different from the regenerative um, differentiation in the other two experiments in that it parallels a human specimen much more closely. This is because zygotic stem cells in most organisms, humans included, um, are totipotent as well, like the S. Mediterranean. In the second volume of the FMB will be 15 photobleached S. Mediterranean worms. Essentially, this photobleaching process harmlessly removes the pigment from the tissue of the organism. One of the natural stem cell dependent processes of these planaria is constant regeneration of tissue. And because this new tissue will be pigmented, we will be able to compare this to the rest of the organism after its time in microgravity. These worms are also very valuable to the experiment 
because they can be kept alive for use in, fur in further experimentation on return to Earth. When they return, we'll be able to see how exposure to microgravity will affect processes such as regeneration, asexual reproduction, among others on Earth. In the third volume of the FME, we'll be containing worms uh, exposed to the chemical solution bromodeoxyuridine, or BRBU. And what this substance does is it allows us to label all newly generated daughter cells throughout the organism's time in microgravity. And unlike simply comparing tissue pigmentation, as in volume two, on the return to Earth, we'll expose the worms to a fluorescent dye, allowing us to view each individual new cell, allowing us to analyze daughter cell distribution, population, and other, and other topics. The disadvantage being that this process requires us to kill the organism to analyze it, preventing its use in further experimentation. Now some of you may be wondering why sending planarians to space is so important. Planarians are actually very similar to humans, even though they are incredibly simplistic. More than half of the genes of planarians have parallels to human genes, and in particular, the gene for stem cell regeneration. This means that by sending planarians to space, we learn more about their genes and subsequently our own. We can study whether microgravity increases stem cell regeneration and enhances the newly formed cells. This in turn yields huge benefits for humans. If we find that microgravity enhances stem cell regeneration in planarians, we can produce tissues and cells lacking in humans. For example, individuals with type 1 diabetes have malfunctioning insulin cells, meaning that their body cells cannot uptake sugar. These stem cells can then produce the insulin cells in microgravity. We thank you for listening to our experiment, to our proposal and welcome any questions you may have. Thank you. Thanks, right that was very good. One second to spare. I didn't want to interrupt you, but that was very good. Uh, I wanted to say congratulations to our third Canadian team. I also would be remiss to point out that this is one of three finalist proposals that the Step 2 National Review Board reviewed here at the Smithsonian's National Air and Space Museum in May. And the subpanel reviewing of UTS schools was just blown away by the caliber of the proposals. So a, a heartfelt congratulations to all of you for the work that you've done, all three teams. I know that Suzanne Lanier did an excellent job in coordinating this effort in your, your community. Um, let me point out that the North Charleston, South Carolina team that's working on Tim Whiskers uh, was a finalist uh, two years ago. And uh, they took the review panel comments to heart and resubmitted the following year. And they were selected as the flight experiment. And that's how real research works. So if UTS uh, participates next year, I would uh, urge you all to consider looking at the, the review panel comments and resubmit this proposal because all three proposals were accepted. Any questions for this team?